Morning, I'm Brian Clanton and today we're going to do a walk through video on a 24 Superstar 4065. Today we're going to start out here on the driver's side door. Uh, so the controls here are uh, lock and unlock for you. This unlocks the front cab doors and then you have your window uh, switches here. Uh, for those to be active, you need to have the key on. Uh, so, driver's side and passenger side. These controls are exactly the same on the um, passenger side of the vehicle, with the exception of uh, there's no driver window control for the passenger. Okay, uh, and then we move up uh, here. Uh, we have a heated uh, mirror for the outside mirrors there. Um, and then we have the control here for the left. If you press on the left side, that's the upper left mirror. And you can, um, you can move it without going outside the vehicle. And then the same with uh, the right side or the passenger side of the vehicle. You can control it. Just press this one over here. So starting down here at the bottom, uh, you have your ignition switch. It is a manually operated uh, keyed ignition switch. And um, just like most other vehicles, turn it on to accessory position. Uh, the difference is, is on the diesel, you'd want to uh, wait for any glow plugs to warm up before you um, start it. Uh, above there you have a dash vent fan for your heat or AC from the dash. I'm going to cover the steering wheel movement here uh, just so we can get a better picture there. So right here to the left side is a lever you can release. Then you can tilt the steering wheel or telescope the steering wheel. Once you have it in the position that you would like it in, just that lever back up into the locked position and then it stays in place. So here on the uh, headlight switch control uh, you have A for automatic. Uh, so these will be active for your automatic uh, high beams if you have it on A and you have your uh, turn signal stock pushed forward. Uh, the zero is off, or the O is off. Uh, this one would be your marker lights, and this one would be your headlights. You can manually control your headlights on high beam, low beam, just by uh, flipping the turn signal stock here back and forth you get the indicator high beam indicator on the dash uh, while we're talking about the turn signal stock in addition to it controlling the high beams by flipping it back and forth like this uh, it also controls the wipers on uh, your delay settings or your lower high settings and also the window uh, wash uh, sprayer if you push in the button on the uh, end of the stock. Okay, for the dash cluster, um, I'm going to do uh, a basic rundown here of it, and uh, all this information is in your Freightliner owner manual. Um, I suggest that you would uh, look at that and get more detailed information, but I'm going to give you the kind of the overview highlights here. So on the steering wheel here, you have a, a pod right here that you can uh, scroll through your um, menu in the center of the dash. And um, so the home screen will give you your trip mileage, uh, what gear you're in, your voltage, the outside temperature, and your and your uh, odometer reading. 
along with your um, fuel mileage. You can scroll down uh, and get some of this information in different uh, formats um, and different legs of your trip if you want to set that up. Uh, driving assistance is your Detroit assurance package. And so there's options that you can go into uh, there. Tire pressure monitoring uh, shows your two front tires and your four rear tires. And reads out the pressure for them. Uh, you have a gear wrench there. Uh, it's got some different things that you can scroll through. Um, transmission health, filter status, oil life, oil level, uh, engine maintenance. Um, and a few other items. Uh, then you have another one that looks like a gear icon, uh, takes you into settings. So here you can set your dash brightness, um, your uh, lighting and whatnot, but you can press the okay, you can go into that menu, then you can scroll up and down on uh, what you wanna set. You can set your time uh, units if you want kilometers or miles per hour on your trips. You just select which one you wanna set and then you can uh, go in and use the arrows to change the settings to your particular liking. Um, the return button will return you back into the menu and um, you go back to your home screen. All right, the actual gauges that you see all the time on the dash, you have your RPM gauge your oil pressure gauge, your fuel gauge right here, and then in the blue right here is your DEF uh, gauge. Uh, your miles per hour and kilometers per hour um, combined gauge. Your uh, air pressure gauge for, for the air in the system, which controls your, your air ride and your uh, brakes then you also have your water temp for your engine coolant here on the other side of the steering wheel uh, you have your uh, phone controls uh, these are connected to the excite uh, radio uh, that way, when you're connected to that, you can uh, accept and hang up phone calls without being distracted. Uh, then also, then on this uh, pod here would be your cruise control, your set, resume, cancel. And then your ICC uh, flash for your marker lights or your headlights. So this would be your transmission stock. So drive, neutral, and reverse. Uh, you can also set this in manual and auto mode for your shifting. And then you can paddle shift here. Uh, see your um, Freightliner owner manual for more information on that. And then this also allows you to turn on your uh, engine brake from the same stock so you have a couple different settings there I believe it's uh, off high medium and low to the right of that you have your um, parking brake release so when you're ready to drive away from your site you would release your park brake and put it in driver reverse. <clears throat> um, this type of uh, truck 
chassis does not have a park so you put your transmission into neutral and you pull your park brake uh, to, to park. This switch here would be your hazard flashers. Turn those on and off. Uh, this is just a blank switch. Uh, footwell lighting. Uh, you can see here on my foot uh, over here, the lighting's on and you turn it off and it kind of fades, fades off. Uh, LDW is lane departure warning. Uh, and so you can uh, say you're in construction or something like that. You can uh, turn the lane uh, departure warning off and it will stay off for a pre-set amount of time uh, and come back on automatically. I believe it's 15 minutes, but you can refer to the Freightliner manual for that. Um, or you can manually... Uh, turn it back on. The shade up and down button is for the shade at the up top of the uh, driver area above the cabinetry. Um, so you can hit shade down. You have to hold this button uh, for to put it where you want it. You can stop it at any time but that allows you to close that shade or open it. Okay, uh, the dock light, uh, that would be outside, the lights on the outside that help, help you um, see what you're doing when you're like backing up at night, kind of illuminates the um, the side of the coaches um, down near the fender wells. So that turns that on and off. Cab ceiling light, um, that turns on the three uh, lights that are on the top of the cab above the uh, shade that you just seen operate. Okay, the camera button, uh, we will get into the camera button uh, when we get into the Excite radio. Um, it's for the 360 camera uh, selections. Uh, AT ATC spin is automatic trash control spin. Uh, you, so you can turn um, your trash control off and it will show up right on your dash. Trash control deactivated. Uh, RPMs may be limited. Um, might help you in a situation where you've you uh, have gotten stuck in it a little bit, and you need to your tires to be able to spin without applying the brakes to that wheel. <clears throat> the regen uh, off. Um, this would be. Uh, to turn off the regeneration process uh, if it starts to regen when you don't want it to. A shutdown override. If uh, your engine derates um, for some reason, uh, you can push this and it will temporarily uh, allow the engine to have power so that you can get off the side of the road to the side of the road or um, what not get out of harm's danger before you uh, turn the engine off. Generator start stop switch. Uh, this allows you to start the uh, Onan generator. Uh, you would press and hold it. It would be going through its prime um, and purge cycle here. Preheat. Once it gets done with that, it will start. Um, you can stop it just by touching Gen Stop. The next um, one here that says Antenna Up, th this is not a switch. 
this is an indicator um, of the antenna being up and um, would illuminate if uh, if it's on hooked up and on uh, these two switches are just blanks there's nothing there uh, differential lock uh, this will lock the rear uh, tires I suggest that you refer to your Freightliner manual on when to use that function. Uh, suspension dump uh, allows you to dump the rear suspension um, and reinflate. Uh, this is helpful, like when you're backing up to a trailer and like your hitch is a little bit too high. You can dump it back underneath it if you're close um, and uh, then reinflate. On to the dash uh, AC con heat and AC controls. So this is your fan control. The O would be off, and then you have your fan settings, you know, one, two, three, four, whatnot. Uh, this would be your selector, and this would be defrost, defrost and feet. Uh, just selects where you want the air to come out of. If you want it all to come out of these vents, that would be this one. All on the floor, that would be that one. Floor and these, this one, and then uh, all face on, on uh, cooling be here. This would be your temperature control. Uh, hot obviously is to the red and the right and uh, colder is to the left in the blue. This switch here would be your recirculate button and depending on what setting you're on uh, it may or may not come on. Uh, they normally do not work on any defrost settings, so if you get it to a defrost setting and you wonder why it's not working, that's why. But once you're on one of the settings that it is acceptable, when you push it, it will illuminate the LED and recirculate the air from inside the cabin versus pulling in outside air. Uh, just below the heat HVAC controls is your um, inputs here, USB auxiliary inputs, and these are connected to the Excite radio. In the center, uh, you have a couple of lights here. They can be turned on by manually pressing the light itself uh, on and off. They will also automatically come on if you open your door. Over here, we have the air horn uh, cable. And then the standard uh, horn would be right here in the center of the steering wheel. Now to the upper center of the dash. Uh, so we have a couple more vents for the dash HVAC system. We have a USB uh, charger and we have a 12 volt power outlet. And it tells you right here, it's 12 volt, 10 amp right on it. This is not intended to be a cigarette lighter. It is a 12 volt power outlet. We'll go over the Excite radio. So to turn it on, you can press, once it starts up, you'll get your menu. <clears throat> so have several things that you can, several things that you can uh, go through here. Radio media center, 
Sirius XM, Bluetooth, HDMI, auxiliary camera, uh, iPod will always be grayed out unless you have something connected uh, to the auxiliary port that's um, an Apple product, uh, Navi, and uh, your setup screen. So on the radio, uh, pretty much like most radios, your band, you can select from AM, FM, um, and then you can tune or seek. Um, you can store these channels in the memory uh, just by, once you get it tuned in, you press and hold it, and now that becomes in the memory. So. <clears throat> You go to Media Center. There are a few preloaded um, songs here, but this is where that you could load more songs in here for your liking. Sirius XM. Uh, it'll pull up the preview channel and. Um, <clears throat> So you have to subscribe if you want uh, Sirius XM available all the time. Uh, Bluetooth, this is where you can go and pair your uh, cellular device so that you can uh, make and receive phone calls um, while driving and being able to use the controls on the steering wheel. HDMI, that would be if you're connected to the HDMI port uh, for input. And if, you, if you're not, this is the screen you get. No video detected. Uh, same with auxiliary. Um, you're not going to get anything detected if you're not hooked up. The camera. So... On the camera screen, you can touch it at any time. You can see it's highlighted. You're on your rear on normal view. You can change that view from hitch view, which is real close to the rear cap, or you can go to horizon view. Like if you're wanting to look farther back at your tow vehicle and the traffic behind you. Uh, you can also uh, manually look at the left or right cameras. Um, those will automatically come on uh, if you put your turn signal on. So like right now, you're up where I'm right, I put the left on. It's going to automatically come on to the left. Okay, so we talked a little bit about this switch earlier being the 360 camera view switch. So... Once you go to select 360, <clears throat> this switch here will allow you to toggle through the available um, pictures, picture formats from the different video screens. So once you get through all of the different views that you can do, it will um, basically Go back to start over again. If you want to get out of 360 view and go back to the rear, you can easily do that and then go back to normal. Navi here, this button, this button uh, will start the navigation system. Uh, you can also, if you're in the menu and you hit Navi, it does the same thing. It's just a shortcut button. You'll always have to accept uh, the agreement before you can use the navigation system. There's more information on the setup of 
your navigation screen in your owner's manual and um, also uh, in your uh, nav and go and uh, excite radio uh, information. Uh, dim changes the uh, lighting in the screen. The favorites button. Uh, this button can be uh, programmed to whatever your favorite is. If you subscribe to XM and you're always listening to the XM, you can hit, you can program it to be your favorites button. If you want your favorites button to be navigation, you could do that. Although you already have a shortcut button there. Um, but if you were always uh, hooked up to auxiliary input and you wanted auxiliary input to be your favorite, you could program that in also. If you want to turn your system off, you can press and hold it and uh, it will go back to the splash screen. All right, on the passenger door, we have the lock and unlock switch for the um, door locks that just does the cab doors. And then we have the window uh, open and close switch for the passenger window only your door handle all right we'll look at the seat controls here so right here we have seat heat and we have one mark or two marks so that's low or high or in the centers off this lever here allows you to move the seat back in the position that you would like. And then it locks down. This switch here uh, adjusts the upper lumbar support. This switch here uh, adjusts the lower lumbar support. Uh, this lever here is for the air ride and it adjusts the height of the seat. Uh, this switch here will uh, <clears throat> lock the dampening uh, on the air ride so you can go up and down here with it like that but then once you lock it you don't get that cushion in the front of the seat here there's a metal bar <clears throat> this if you lift up will allow you to move the whole seat forward and backwards above that there is a uh, lever that you pull and then you can tilt the seat like actually like lean back in the seat and once you release it it holds that position so then the next one uh, over uh, when you release it it allows the seat portion itself to slide forward or backwards to Get you more comfortable in your seat. <clears throat> then on the far left is a lever that you can um, move. It is the horizontal isolator. So you can choose whether or not you want uh, your seat to be able to move forward and backward. <clears throat> you may not want 
that to uh, be engaged if you're pulling a trailer or um, something that caused the whole vehicle to kind of move back and forth. Uh, then right here, this lever on the side here, this one will allow you to rotate the seat. Um, if you have it in the right position, height-wise and forward, you can actually turn the seat around and face the other side of the, the interior of the coach. For the armrest... You can bring them down and go all the way to the down position. And then as you come up, they, you'll hear them click. And wherever it clicks, that's where it's locked in position. If you get it too high for your liking, just push it all the way back up and start over. Or push it back out of the way. I believe that covers the seat adjustments and I believe the driver's seat is the same adjustments just on the other side. Okay, shipped with your coach is a uh, privacy shade for the windshield area. This manually installs, um, so I'm going to walk you through installing that. Uh, what I usually do is come over here and start with the snaps right here. After the snaps are on, there's a series of clips here. And... There's a rod up here at the front area. Put that onto the rod there. Kind of work your way across. And then finish up with your snaps over here on the driver's side. <clears throat> Starting over here on the uh, driver's side, we have additional storage cabinets. Um, in this cabinet, there is a sticker here that you need to get a hold of Numar um, for parts or service or Freightliner. There's uh, phone numbers in there for you. More storage here. In the center one, this is the Excite core that runs the Dash uh, infotainment center. More storage on this side. And then on this side is additional storage over here. Uh, this one here uh, has your subwoofer installed in it. Okay, along with your Superstar uh, come transport pads. These plastic pieces here are designed to be put on the floor where the rollers come up off of the slide out and roll across the floor. Uh, installing these before you travel will uh, keep the rollers from vibrating and making marks on your ceramic tile. So uh, anytime that you get ready to, to travel you can, if you don't know where your rollers are, 
you'll you can uh, pick the slide out up just a little bit um, run it in just a little bit so <clears throat> once you get it up you can see where they're at and you want to put them in there uh, not past the edge of the ceramic tile I'm going to start with a couple things here on the ceiling uh, one up here at the front is a smoke detector. Uh, there is a LED indicator that will flash intermittently here uh, to indicate that it's working. Uh, there's also a test button underneath the sticker here. Sometimes they're kind of hard to press uh, with a sticker on them, but you can press it and test it. That will let you know that... Um, it is operational and any time that uh, you're getting the chirping or you're getting um, uh, not seeing the light or uh, when you test it uh, you're not getting the alarm you want to check the battery uh, that can be done just by squeezing the sides of it opening it up and there's a 9 volt battery there <clears throat> Okay, while we're looking at the ceiling here, we're going to look at the ceiling feature. Uh, underneath the ceiling feature is a series of vents that are for the rooftop air conditioner units. There's one of these in the bedroom and one up here in the living room. So you have your discharge vents over on the driver's side, driver's half of the coach. On the passenger half, you have the air intake. And they have a filter on them. So you can grab those uh, louvers and pull down on them. Uh, there's a little plastic clip there. So they will come apart. You can take this hair, uh, all these, uh, each one, wash it in warm soapy water, uh, dry it, re put it on here, and then you can reinstall them just by going back up here and pushing up right in the center. They will clip back in. If any, any at any time those are damaged or uh, beyond cleaning. Uh, they are available through the parts department. Um, you should not run your air conditioners without filters in place. Uh, you will eventually clog up the uh, fins in, inside the air conditioner and get poor performance. To close it, just simply lift up on it and the magnets will clip it back in place. Okay, starting up here in the dinette area, uh, we have the storage cabinet, the Bose speaker, uh, which is connected to the TV. Uh, you can also uh, Bluetooth to this Bose speaker if you wanted to listen to music without going through the TV. Uh, here we have a AV cabinet, audio visual cabinet, a um, couple of HDMI cables here, uh, Blu-ray slash DVD and satellite source. So if you had a uh, receiver or a hopper, uh, DVD player, Blu-ray player, whatever. Uh, you could hook it up here in this cabinet and these cables would go down to your TV. Uh, <clears throat> in the back, there's a couple of plates named satellite and satellite bunk one and bunk two. So <clears throat> the satellite bunk one and bunk two, those uh, cables 
basically run from here over to the bunk area and there will be another plate over there marked uh, satellite. You would have to connect those to your device or uh, use jumpers uh, to get that signal over there. Just because there's a plate that says satellite does not mean satellite, you have satellite signal. Uh, there's no satellite on this particular coach. Uh, backing up here, we have the KIB uh, light backlit light switch panels. Uh, so ceiling, seating, accent, uh, backlighting is where you can dim the backlighting of the switches or turn off the backlighting. And then high-low is where you can uh, dim the overhead ceiling lights. At the windows, <clears throat> we have manual shades. Um, so you can pull those and down and stop them at any place that you would like along the way. Uh, when you're ready to put them up, you just give them a quick pull jerk and you can um, let them go up to their retracted position. There's also screens um, work the same way. We have a uh, 120 volt outlet here. Uh, it also has a couple of USB ports on it for charging um, devices. Same on both sides. Uh, the large window here <clears throat> does have crank out vents. It can be operated by turning the operator here, closing them. The windows on the sides also <clears throat> have a vent and a screen. However, they are can be unlocked and then they are, can be lifted up. <clears throat> Once you lift them up to a certain spot, they clip in. To lower them back down, you have to push and release those clips on both sides. Can be shut and then relocked. The main TV uh, is in the dinette cabinet and it can be raised by pushing the TV lift up switch in between the theater seats. Okay, so the TV, every time that you go to a new location, you will need to go in and go to your uh, setup menu and, and you will have to rescan for channels. We'll hit the source button here. We'll get this screen here. We'll scroll over to the settings icon and we'll select that. We'll then scroll over to all settings. We're going to be in the picture menu here. And we're going to choose to go down to broadcasting. Once we get into broadcasting, we're going to scroll over to auto program. We're going to select that. It's going to ask you if you want to start. 
and you're going to select start. Then you have to answer one more question. Do you want to scan for both cable and air channels, air only or cable only? <clears throat> the way that your TV is set up uh, and wired uh, through the antenna, uh, if you choose both, you're only going to get one station. Uh, uh, you, or not station. You're only going to get one choice of air or cable, whichever one you're hooked up to and you're um, set up for. So, if you want to do air, <clears throat> you need to come over here and make sure that your WineGuard Razor TV antenna is turned on. When that is powered on, that is a signal booster. And when it is powered off, it transfers part cable through. If you're connected to part cable, it will transfer that through to the TV. Okay, we've gotten over here to the auto program and we're ready to start searching for air antenna channels because we now have the WineGuard Razor antenna turned on. So we're going to search that. We'll go through its program here. <clears throat> we're set up today outside with this coach, so it's going to give us uh, channels. And as it uh, finds them, it will start populating uh, what cha how many channels it's found. Okay, so the search was successful. It found 39 channels. Um, we're going to go ahead and close that. And then we'll be able to exit out of programming menu and watch TV. So at this point, you'll be able to just scroll through your channels that it picked up that were preset. If you have part cable available and you want to scan for part cable, <clears throat> we're basically going to do the same thing with the exception of we're going to come up here and turn off the WineGuard TV antenna. We're going to power it off. Okay. And you can see that it killed our signal, our over-the-air signal. So we're going to go down again, and we're going to go to the settings. Scroll over to all settings again. Select it, go down to broadcasting, select it, go to auto program, select it. We're going to start auto program, and then this time instead of choosing air, we're going to go down and choose cable. <clears throat> now, we are not connected to part cable, so it's not going to find any channels, but this is showing you how you would do that. So it'll go through the scanning process, looking for channels. And then if you're hooked up to cable and you have a good signal, it will populate how many cable channels it has found for you. You'll be able to then scroll through those uh, just like you did on the air channels. <clears throat> just remember, this has to be done Every time you change locations, your digital over-the-air channels will change, and so will your cable channels if you uh, go to a different uh, park that has cable available. We're going to go ahead and stop this uh, scan because it's not going to find any channels. <clears throat> Thank you.
and we're going to close out of that. You'll also be able to choose other sources uh, if you're connected to them, such as if you put a Blu-ray or a DVD player in your overhead cabinet, then and it's hooked up, you can uh, choose that and watch that on the uh, TV as well. Gives you a brief rundown of the TV, how to set up for channels. Remember, you'll have to do this for each TV. To store the TV uh, lift, just press the TV lift down button and release it. It will store. Uh, it is important that you travel with this TV in the lowered position. I'll go ahead now and show you how to set up your dinette for a sleeping area, if desired. Okay, so underneath the dinette table is a lever right here that you can unlock. Just lift up slightly on the table and unlock it. You want to grab your seat cushions from your dinette. <clears throat> they just have some little tabs here on the back that hold it in place. So there's nothing really to release. Just lift up and do that. Then to lower the dinette table, just push down on it. <clears throat> you can then put your dinette seats back in place. And then there's an additional cushion that can be put in between those dinette cushions to fill out your bed. I don't have the additional cushion, but there's an additional cushion that would go in between these two. You can put it down in there and that would complete the uh, bed surface. So then to put it back to a dinette, we just do these process in reverse. Remove these, pick up on your dinette top, get it all the way to the top, grab your locking lever and lock it back in place. You can then put your cushions back on your dinette. And you're back ready for dinner. Okay. There is on each side a stor storage drawer underneath the dinette. It can be pulled out. Push it to shut it and latch it. Okay, looking at the uh, theater seat area, uh, here to the side of the lower fascia, you have a little cabinet for storage, and then the upper cabinets here, uh, all storage area. This is generally where you'll, when Newmar ships the coach, uh, where the uh, windshield privacy drape will be stored. 
when you get it from your dealer, I'm not sure where it will be stored, but that's where we ship it. Uh, once again, over here on this side, we have the MCD uh, shades and screens that can be operated here. They are manual. Can be open and closed. The window can be open and closed just like the uh, window in the other slide out that I showed you. The same with the larger window here behind. You have the crank out vents that can be opened and closed. <clears throat> you have a couple of switches here in between. Uh, TV lift up and down and backlighting for the switch. So, uh, another one here, ceiling, seating, right hand and left hand RD, those are for reading lights. Those are the lights right above the uh, seats. And then your high low for your ceiling. <clears throat> Additional uh, 120 volt outlet behind the sofa, theater seat. Uh, on this side, you have some couple more switches, uh, floor heat, uh, and then you can choose high, medium, or, or low. And then <clears throat> this one that says heating is just an indicator of when it's actually turned on. Uh, it does, it's not a switch, it's just an indicator. And then uh, a few more switches below it that control some of the the lights in the uh, kitchen area. For the theater seat, you have this control here. It has a USB charger in the center and then as you operate the switch, you can see that to the front opens and lays the uh, seat back in the recline position and raises the footrest. And then if you push it towards the back, it retracts everything back into a chair type position. You have a couple of cup holders and a little storage cabinet here with a slider. That slider's good for remotes and stuff like that for the TV. Controls for the opposite side of the seat operate the same way. They're just on the opposite arm of the theater seat. Okay, above the entrance door is a control panel that houses several components. So up here, where there's a sticker that says solar prep. If uh, you were to install solar, um, there is a <clears throat> wires ran up to the roof to a plate up there that says solar prep. Here you have the wine guide razor antenna control. So you have your power on and off switch uh, right there. And then once you turn this on, it will go through a search sequence to see um, what kind of stations, TV, uh, over-the-air TV uh, stations it can pick up. And then you have a couple buttons down here below that are for fine-tuning to turn the antenna left or right. Uh, this is the uh, control that I was saying earlier when you're going to program for air TV, it must be on. When you're going to program for cable TV, it must be off. The control next to it here is your magnum inverter um, 
panel. It'll give you some information about <clears throat> your coach house batteries, uh, the voltage, and how many uh, amps that the inverter is charging them. Or if it's not charging them and it's using uh, power out of them, it will tell you what the voltage is and uh, how much power it's using. One thing that you'll want to do here, there's a button here that says charger on and off. And if you see here, I hit the button and now the charger light is flashing and my charger voltage my voltage is still there, but it, I'm not charging at zero amps because I just turned the charger off. One thing that anytime you're plugged in or you have your generator running, you'll want to make sure this charger is turned on. That way it can maintain your house batteries. Once I turn it on, it'll uh, sense what's going on. It will come back to how many amps it's charging here after a short delay. Uh, inverter on and off. <clears throat> you can choose to have the inverter portion turned on or off. If it's on, your if you lose 120 volts, the Appliances and outlets that are on the sub panel portion <clears throat> of the breaker box would be powered off of the inverter as long as the voltage is up and doesn't reach low battery cutout. Once it reaches low battery cutout, the inverter would shut off and you would lose power to those uh, items as well if uh, no charging happened in between. Shore power, uh, as long as you're plugged into 50 amp service, you don't need to mess with this. If you're plugged into 30 amp, uh, you still don't need to mess with this. Uh, if you plug into anything less than 30 amps, you're going to need to come in here, which, by the way, we don't recommend you, char you plug into anything under 30 amps. We're aware there's some situations that you might not have a choice. So if you're plugged into less than 30 amps, you come in here and you can hit this and then you can change the setting here on here. And this will help you uh, to keep from your inverter blowing the breaker from the charger. Um, if you are plugged in to a 20, 15 or 20 amp circuit and you do not change this and this inverter goes into bulk charge, it will likely blow the breaker that you're plugged into. Um, and that's it, possibly without even running anything else in your coach. So that will, <clears throat> that will take that down. The auto gen start that comes on the uh, panel here. We do not uh, use that feature. And then there's some setup and some tech buttons here, uh, which <clears throat> this will come set up uh, already from the factory. And the tech button is mostly uh, for a technician uh, trying to get information out of here. <clears throat> If you want more description on those buttons, uh, you can look at your Magnum Inverter uh, Remote Panel User Guide. Next to that, we have your Precision Circuits Control Board and Monitor Panel. So as long as you're plugged into 50 amp service, I will show you here that you're plugged into 50 amp service. Um, and you can scroll through the menu here and you can see uh, it'll tell you several things here um, 
block heater, water heat, one and two, and your ACs, middle, rear, and front. Um, it will tell you um, your if those are shed or not. It's not going to shed anything on 50 amp service. Um, but if you are on 30 amp service uh, and you were running your air conditioners or whatnot, it would be shedding different loads and you could see what those loads were shed on there to try to keep you under the 30 amps uh, so you wouldn't blow your breaker at, at the, that you're plugged into. It will also show you your line voltage coming into the coach. This is helpful uh, as you go around the country and you're plugged into different power sources. Uh, you can see that right now we're plugged in. That line one is 119 volts. Line two is 120 volts. And what we're drawing on those different uh, two different legs. Uh, so we're drawing 33 amps total. <clears throat> we're drawing 12 amps on line one and 21 amps on line two. So, you know, if we were plugged into a 30 amp circuit, it might hold that for a little bit, but it's eventually going to blow. <clears throat> uh, but since we're plugged into uh, 50 amp, it's okay with that. Uh, it also gives you a little information here about uh, your your ground and neutral and uh, if it's <clears throat> wired okay. You can also get some information about what version of uh, software this is running. That's a basic rundown on this panel. Uh, next to that, we have your slide out switches. Uh, these are for the front slide outs. What well, would be your main full wall slide out and your uh, front dinette slide out? So, uh, these switches <clears throat> to operate the slide outs, they have to be held on the in or the out position. Uh, as soon as you release them, the slide out will stop. So to get anything fully retracted or fully extended, you, you must hold them until they are in their position, fully in or fully out, whichever you want. Uh, we'll go over a few other things that we want you to do and look at before you run your slide outs. Uh, we'll do that later in the video on the outside. This panel here is your HWH leveling panel. For this to be active, you'll want your ignition key at least in the accessory position. Once your slide outs have been extended, once you get to your campsite and you, um, you've ran your, your uh, slide outs to the out position on, on the airbags, uh, you can then uh, level the coach. So you can simply come in here and hit auto level and it will start its sequence. It will drop air out of the airbags. And then once it has done that, it will start the leveling process. Uh, you'll start to see the jack legs uh, going down and you'll see red lights come on. You'll also see the, hear the audible alarm uh, go, go off that the jacks are down. If it were low in any position, there would be yellow lights either at the front or the side indicating which uh, area is low. Uh, we're on a pretty level uh, parking pad here, so uh, it's basically going to put the jacks down till they touch and look at everything and then 
shut off because it's pretty level. There are a couple of warnings here. Uh, excess slope, if one of the yellow lights were on and it could not run the jacks far enough down to get it level, the excess slope light would come on. Right here, there is a uh, triangle here. If HWH detected that there was a fault in the system, it would illuminate there. Uh, if it says not in park break, um, so that would illuminate if your park break was not set and it would not operate. And then travel mode is when you're ready to travel. Okay, so that would mean your jacks are retracted. One thing about this panel, there if you remember on the dash switches, there was a suspension dump switch on the Freightliner side that will dump and inflate the suspension for like backing up to a trailer. And that will work to inflate and deflate it if you've inflated and deflated it from that switch. As I told you, when we put the jacks down, that we dumped the air. Uh, this panel gave it a signal to dump. So to reinflate those bags, we're going to have to give it a signal from this panel to reinflate. So we can do that simply by pressing the auto store button. And when the jacks are fully retracted, um, this will go into travel mode and that indicates that it has given the uh, suspension, the signal to air back up. Depending on <clears throat> the conditions and everything, for it to actually fully inflate the airbags, you may have to start the engine and wait for the air tanks to fill up for there be enough pressure to fully inflate the airbags. <clears throat> it usually takes a couple of minutes for the uh, <clears throat> jacks to retract. And then just as the um, jack indicators started <clears throat> going down one by one and coming on, uh, being illuminated red, they should go out as well the same way. One by one until they're all done. There's the first one in the back went out, went in the front, went out. The second rear one went out. Now we're just waiting for the last front one to fully retract. Okay, so this indicates all the jacks have retracted and 
it's in travel mode so it's given the signal for the airbags to inflate you can now turn this uh, system off I like to say trust and verify before I actually drive away I go around and visually inspect and make sure the jacks are truly fully up in the stowed position and that there's nothing else around uh, underneath my coach or around my tires before I leave. So this control here is the Gerard awning control. You can turn the light on and off. What it's going to do here is it's going to show you what channel you're on. So you can you can have channel zero, channel one, channel two, or it'll go back to zero. Zero will control both of the awnings at the same time. Channel one will control the front one. Channel two will control the rear one. If you want to just run the front one in and out, you would put it on channel one and you would press the button out and you would hear the awning uh, go out if you wanted to stop it you could, you could stop it and then if you wanted to bring it in you would bring it back in the ignition key needs to be in the off position for these to operate correctly the lock button uh, if you press and hold that it will lock the control so no one can um, touch the buttons and do anything. If you want to unlock it, you can press and hold the unlock button. It will unlock the keypad. If you want to run both the awnings at the same time, you would select channel zero and then hit your in or out buttons. You can stop them at any time by hitting stop. There's also a handheld remote that we'll show you outside the coach later. Uh, just below the Gerard awning switch uh, is the HWH master reset switch. In the event that your HWH uh, steps and or slide outs were not working, uh, you can come in here and press and hold this switch. It's a momentary contact switch. And it says hold it for at least five seconds. So you hold that down and then you let it go. And that has taken the power away from the HWH system. And it's reset the memory in case it said it ran too long. So here this bank of switches. You have your patio light. Uh, you can turn your patio light on and off. That the patio light is right outside the entrance door above it and it also illuminates the step well as well uh, block heater this block heater switch uh, we'll show you the block heater outside in the front uh, later there is a outlet that is switched so you can leave the block heater plugged into that outlet and then turn it on and off from here. So that allows you to heat your engine, preheat your engine before starting in cold weather conditions. Uh, this one here that's called step cover. Uh, in the step well, uh, you can, there's a cover that you can extend here by pressing and holding this button. It will extend and lift up and it will stop automatically when it's done and then it allows you to have this space uh, like while you're traveling if you want to walk around and not step down into the step well. When you get to where you're going and you want to go out your steps you can simply Press and hold the button in the down position. It will retract it. This switch here shows a baggage lock and unlock. 
So to lock the baggage compartments or the cargo compartments, you would hit lock. To unlock them, you would hit unlock. To lock the entrance door, you can lock that and unlock it. And then you have your battery disconnect. Your battery disconnect will disconnect most of the power from your house batteries that is uh, brought into the coach for lights and um, monitor panels and other functions. Um, there's a few memories that may still be on, but as a general rule, this disconnects it for storage. This switch panel here is for your security lights. These three switches here, driver side, passenger side, and rear, those will turn on and off the different security lights. You will be able to see those once we go outside the coach. They're about three quarters of the way up the sidewall, usually half to three quarters. And um, then this exterior step switch. So if you want to have your steps operate each time that you open and close the door. So we've opened the door, they've extended and we've shut the door, they're retracting. You would if you want that to operate that way, you would leave the switch in this position here up towards the exterior step. If you do not want it to, ex to retract each time that you go in and out the door, you would press this switch the opposite way. When you open the door, they would go out once. Once they're out, you can shut the door and they remain out. If you were to start the coach and release the parking brake, that would override this switch saying that the steps need to stay out and it would, it would retract them provided the doors closed. Okay, over here on this sidewall, we have some information labels about operating our slide out, some do's and don'ts. Uh, please follow those and then there's also some warning labels here about the uh, seats and anything else that would be in the way um, of your slide outs operating. Uh, make sure all those are out of the way before they would operate. Up below that you have a fire extinguisher. This can be released and pulled off of there and then uh, you're free to carry it around. There is an additional switch right here below it and it says entrance step override. This switch is there in case your steps would not extend. Uh, you could push that button and get your steps to extend. Um, so provided that there would be a issue with the curb feeler or the shin guard um, that wasn't allowing this to operate, this would override that. It does bypass all the safety features, so it becomes a manual operation and the uh, user is responsible to make sure that they're not running into something and bending the step. We have a light switch here with the ceiling and bathroom, bedroom lights, accent lights, and uh, the high-low switch. This clock here, from time to time, will get asked, how do you get to this to change the battery? It's Velcroed on, so you can release the Velcro at the bottom. At the top, it's got a screw that it's hanging on. You could get it out far enough here on the side without taking it off of the screw to uh, get to the battery. And then it's the bottom of it's held on with Velcro here. So you would change your battery, line this back up where it's straight, and press back in on the clock. Above the refrigerator, we have a cabinet that just additional storage. The re refrigerator itself 
is a whirlpool and you can see that the doors are locked right now. We install a travel latch that you can flip backwards and then the doors will open as well as the freezer door drawer. Down below there is an ice maker in here and There's a bail arm on the ice maker itself back here. If you want to turn the ice maker off, you just lift up the bail arm. If you want it to be activated and where it will make ice automatically, you would flip that bail arm to the down position. The Water filter for the refrigerator would come like this and it would insert here into this. You have to kind of line up everything as you go in there and it only goes in one way. You would fully seat it in that position and then you would close the door. I'm not putting it in right now because there's some uh, RV antifreeze in the system. Um, one other thing that there is a uh, filter um, that can be installed right back here at the back and that helps keep the things fresh and smelling good. Anytime you want to travel, you want to make sure all these doors are shut. The lock is pushed to the forward position and that you test each door to make sure that it has engaged into the lock. So since this is an RV, this is a nice feature. From time to time, you're not using it all the time. You want to turn the cooling off. Uh, these two arrows right here at the end We'll do that so if you press and hold them it will turn the refrigerator on and to the cooling position if you press and hold them both at the same time again it will turn the cooling off you can uh, also turn lights on and and reset your filter settings and whatnot here uh, all that's outlined in your Whirlpool owner manual. To get uh, water from here, you would put pressure cup up here and press in on this. A couple things that you need to make sure uh, are operational. It's either you got to be hooked up to city water uh, and it pressurized, or you got to have water in your fresh tank and your water pump has to be on for uh, it to have pressure here to uh, release and out of the refrigerator. Looking here around the refrigerator to the next wall here, you have a pocket door that you can press this uh, latch down. That allows you to close it. It will latch in place once you get it all the way closed. To open it, you wanna press down again and push the door back into this position it relocks again this would be the travel position this would be the position that you want to have the door in anytime you're traveling uh, right there by that you have another little switch panel uh, tells you what what they do simple operation just press on and off uh, here we have fantastic fan uh, control so to turn it on you can just press the power button and then you can turn the speed down or up by doing that. You can also, if there's moisture on the vent and it doesn't want to operate um, due to some moisture, maybe somebody's taking a bunch of showers or 
uh, whatnot, and there's a lot of moisture in here, or uh, it's just went from a <clears throat> cold environment to in indoors or something. Uh, you can press and hold the down button, and that will for at least three seconds, and that will override the rain sensor. If you turn the fan off and turn it back on, that will automatically override the rain sensor. Or you can press and hold um, that button and it will turn the rain sensor override off again. A couple of additional things on the um, fantastic fan. There's a removable cover here. It's up with latches. Um, if it's not non-operational, um, there is a glass fuse here on the side that could be um, blown. And then in the event that uh, it wouldn't work electrically, you can manually uh, crank it open. To put the cover back up, you simply go back up here, line up the latches, push it back up in place. All right, we're, we're going to look at the kitchen area now. So, you open this cabinet here. There's a few things in here. Um, so, in here you've got your Freightliner driver's and maintenance manual, your Allison transmission operator's manual, and your Cummins engine manual. So, uh, there's also two remotes in here. These remotes are for the door unlock and un lock and unlock on the cab portion only. So, um, nice to have key fobs that you can lock and unlock the, the cab doors with, but they will not open, unlock the, uh, entrance door here on the side of the coach. Uh, that is uh, operated separately. We also have our Nimar black bag in there. Um, that contains Numar Num owner guide and several uh, OEM booklets and whatnot for different uh, plumbing, heating, uh, and electrical uh, devices as well as appliances that are in your coach. Should go through that and um, <clears throat> look those over, fill out your warranty and information in those. There's also some <clears throat> warnings again in here about operating the slide out. There's also um, some important notices about uh, not exceeding the uh, gross vehicle weight rating. And there's also uh, this sticker here tells you what the outside color paint colors are on the coach there's also a sticker here that has coach information and the, and some of the uh, weight ratings and the uh, cargo carrying capacity whatnot beside that you have another storage cabinet it also has a 120 volt outlet in it and you'll see there's a plug in there. If you plug that in, <clears throat> that is the microwave power outlet. 
Um, I'm not going to get into how to use your microwave. Uh, I will tell you that before that you can use your microwave, you'll need to set your clock. So you'll need to set that up. And um, there are light buttons underneath here for the and fan uh, buttons here as well. Okay. Your microwave comes with a few accessories there. Uh, once again, refer to your owner's manual. We do install an additional latch here uh, to try to help uh, from the door opening during travel. All right, we're going to jump back up here to the window. Manual blind again, and then uh, once again, the window has a crank out vent. You can turn the knob to open or close that window. The sink has covers that can be removed. Uh, they can be stored underneath. There is a um, faucet here. This would be your temperature and uh, water, amount of water selector here. So you would turn it here for the temperature and you would open it and close it for the amount of water. Um, it also has a pull down handle here and it's a sprayer, so if you want to spray, you would with it turned on, you would you would press this here for it to spray. And then of course, like any other sink that to uh, make it hold water, you would put your baskets in place and push them down to drain them. You'd pull them up. Store these covers back on your sink. Then you have your stove top, and it also has covers, but on the back side of those covers is a cutting board. So you can take these, um, you can turn this around if you wish and use that for a prep area. You can take it to another location and use it for a prep area if you would like also. Okay, so this is an induction cooktop. It has a couple pretty cool features. Uh, number one, uh, if you don't want to cook in the coach, you can pull it out, unplug it there, and you can carry it outside on the picnic table or whatever you want to do. Plug it back in and set it back in here. Operate it here as well. Okay, so the biggest thing with this type of cooktop is reading this uh, label here that it comes with. Uh, it must have um, cookware that's compatible with induction cooking. Basically, that means that they have to be magnetic. Um, there are, like, completely aluminum pans will not work. Uh, aluminum clad pans that have the um, logo on them for the induction uh, would work. Anyways... Uh, so if you turn it on and you don't, it don't see a magnetic pan here, uh, it will not let it come on, but, um, you can turn it on once it, uh, 
seize the magnetic pan, you can adjust the temperature and whatnot. If it doesn't see anything on the burner, it will time out and shut back off. Once you're done cooking and once uh, the cooktop is cooled, you can put these covers back on. Okay, looking back on the lower part of the cabinet here, there is a extension here that can be set up like that. Basically, pick it up and push those in place and they the supports that hold it. To put them back away, you want to pick back up on these and you got to push these supports back so that it will lower underneath there we have storage and more storage with a uh, trash can this here would be just a tip out drawer nice for sponges and cleaning products Beside that, you have a roar, row of drawers for storage. Underneath the stove, you have more drawers for storage. And then you have the larger drawer that um, when it leaves Newmar, it will have uh, several things in it. This would be your whole house filter wrench. We'll show you that later. There is some touch-up paint. The remote that I spoke about for your awnings earlier. We'll show you that here in a little bit. Uh, there, All your TV remotes are in here. So you have a couple of TV remotes for your Skyworth um TVs and DVD players in the bunks, one for each of those, and then your Samsung uh, TVs, there's a few remotes for those, and then your Bose speakers, um, the one inside the coach, and the other one would either be in your bedroom or outside entertainment center, whichever. Uh, there is a USB plug here or a USB um, storage device here from Gerard. It's got their logo on it. Uh, you can plug that into your computer. It shows you uh, everything you want to know about Gerard awnings and more. This would be the remote key fobs for the entrance door the main entrance door once again these would only control that and the cargo door locks and they would not control the cab uh, door locks those are a separate key fob that i showed you earlier and you have a stopper This rod here would be your emergency retraction rod for the Girard awnings in the in a condition where your Girard awnings would not come in. Uh, there is a port on the outside uh, up on the top that can be pl a plastic plug that can be removed and uh, this Rod can be inserted in there, and then it can be put in like a uh, cordless drill or screw gun and, uh, and turn to uh, retract the awnings. Allows you to get it somewhere for service.
extra set of keys and then we'll also cover this when we go outside too this would be the uh, flagpole bracket right beside um, this you got two closet two cabinets this front one would be a pantry and to open those drawers you need to push in on them they're they won't just come open you push in on them and that unlocks them and then they can be pulled out and then to lock them back in place uh, push in again and then that will allow you to close the door um, just forward of that you have another cabinet that you can kind of a multi-purpose cabinet you can use it for as pantry you can use it as clothes hanger area there is a light in there there is a bar in there for hanging clothes and some shelves. So this particular floor plan has uh, the bunk beds. So in each bunk, you have a Skyworth TV with a uh, DVD player. The DVD is in the side here. And uh, you can use a remote to control that. Pretty, pretty basic. Uh, it's connected to a port up here that says TV antenna. So uh, provided you have tuned in your uh, Razor antenna, and then you go in here and tune in your air uh, channel programming into your TV, you'll be able to watch local channels. Uh, if you... Um, had part cable and you would do the proper measures up there to set up for part cable and then come back here and program for part cable you would be able to watch those there is a satellite uh, input here uh, this coach is not wired with satellite uh, but there is a wire that goes from this port by the by these TVs up to the front AV cabinet, and it's marked uh, bunk one and two. So if you put the satellite on and the um, receiver and hooked it up, you could get satellite. Uh, Back here to these TVs. Uh, this TV is 12 volt operated. And there's a 12 volt plug there. Uh, obviously, if it's not plugged in, it's not going to work. There's a 120 volt outlet also there. Uh, on the other side, there's a 120 volt outlet with USB ports on them. Those are charge ports so that you could um, uh, charge any of your devices little cargo net there um, use, used basically for hold your phone or tablet while it's charging uh, right beside that is a light uh, that light switch is right on the um, light itself so let's see if I can reach it here You just push the button for the light and then push it again to turn it off. And then the bottom bunk is set up identical to the top bunk. Um, one thing to keep in mind uh, for this top bunk, uh, 250 pound capacity. Um, there is another warning label here, uh, and that's a about the mattress. If you were ever going to do anything different with mattresses, that is the specs for the mattress. Uh, the window itself uh, on these, you have a shade and a, a 
day night shade both um, you can operate their manual again and there's also a crank out window vent the bunk ladder can be removed by pulling straight up on that there's hooks here that hook on the top and the bottom section of the wood um, when you're installing it you do have to be cautious or you will damage the wood on the top or the bottom also underneath the bunk uh, lower bunk there is some storage space so this can be pulled out all right we're going to move into the bathroom here we're going to start with looking at the shower here so up top we have a skylight and then we have a foldable seat shower seat that can be lowered for your convenience uh, probably the most um, question thing is the uh, shower miser and how that works so if you look very closely at this knob here there's a icon here that looks like a shower and then over here there's an icon that looks like a, a recycling um, logo. So, if we want to use the shower, this needs to be over here in this position. But if you wish to conserve a little bit of water and you want your water warm before you get in the shower and you don't want to waste that water. So, first of all, to have hot water, you have to have your Oasis hydronic heating on and warmed up, and that, that supplies the uh, hot water. So, at that point, you would take this here, rotate it around here to the recycling icon, this blue mushroom, they actually call it a magic mushroom. It's blue when it's cold. And as the water gets warm, this turns a milky white color in the center. Once it turns the milky white color in the center, you know that your water is hot up to this faucet. So you can then turn this back over to the shower side you can then turn your shower on to your desired temperature and then you can use this one here to select whether you want it to come out of the sprayer or the shower head once you're done with your shower you turn that off and you leave this in that position some people try to use this as a water saver so they don't waste water as they're showering. If you're running on your fresh tank and your water pump, that is not a terrible idea. However, if you leave it in this position too long, the recycle part too long, you're going to pump hot water into your cold water tank, your fresh water tank. So you want to limit that. Also, if you're actually hooked up to city water, you have a water supply, pressurized water supply from your garden hose. Uh, if you put this over to this position, you are filling the fresh tank with new water. Instead of pulling it out of the fresh tank 
and dumping it back into the fresh tank, you're actually adding more water to your fresh tank. It will still work the same way, but it may overflow your fresh tank. Just remember, anytime you're connected to city water supply, if you have it in the recycle mode, if you're depending on how full your tank is, you may overfill your tank and you may see water underneath your coach. For the shower door, there's a travel lock here. And to actually operate your shower and use it, you'll want to unlock it so that you can close your doors. But when you're done showering and you're ready to travel, you want to make sure you lock this back into place so that these doors cannot slide back and forth and bang around while you're uh, in travel. Your vanity here is great for cosmetics and medicine. In this cabinet, uh, you have some more storage space. Uh, up at the top is your satellite prep plate. So on the roof, there is a plate that will say satellite prep and there's this one and there's a piece of conduit that runs in between them with a pull wire in it and it allows you to uh, pull the needed cables through there through that conduit um, for easier installation if you ever decide to put a satellite on the coach. Uh, there's a 120 volt outlet there, and you also have uh, your Wi Fi Ranger is here. There's a lot of information in it in your owner's guide, and um, it basically allows you to look for Wi Fi signals and bring them in, and then this would be the router that distributes them out. Um, just because you connect to this Wi-Fi router uh, does not mean you have internet. Just keep that in mind. Um, there actually has to be internet supplied to this to be able to uh, have internet. In the next cabinets over, we have your 12-volt fuse panel and uh, some spare fuses <clears throat> these GFI uh, controls here are for your floor heat um, floor heat one and two uh, so that's basically your front and your rear um, floor heat so at any time if your floor heat is not operating you can come in here and you should see the green light there and if uh, it's has been popped the GFI has been popped it will not have a green light so you can hit the reset button and uh, <clears throat> provided everything's good it will stay on and you will then be able to operate your floor heat. Um, there, most of these are standard fuses, standard ATC fuses, and there are some spare ATC fuses here. If you have a blown fuse, you want to make sure that you uh, match up the size with what you're taking out, and it's also here. Uh, there's a ledger here that has the number of the fuse, which it also has a, a ledger here uh, with an arrow pointing to what the fuse number is. And then over here, it tells you what the size fuse is. You don't want to change the size fuses here. They're set up according to the wire size and stuff in your coach. Uh, there are... Uh, a couple of resettable 
ones down here and if they pop this here will be sticking out it can be reset um, you don't necessarily have to take them out to do that I just took them out for the ease of seeing it and then on this side is your 120 volt breaker box um, <clears throat> You'll see here that right here it's labeled sub panel. So from here over is your sub panel. So bed, bath, basement, microwave, driver side slide out, refrigerator, passenger side slide out, and then one that's called main. Okay. This main is the one that feeds the inverter. These other ones right here in this portion called subpanel are from the inverter. So basically these are the items that if you have your inverter turned on will work when you're not plugged into shore power. All these other ones over here from this point this way, air conditioners, um, power to your trailer, cooktops, all these other ones over here, washer, dryer, heat pads, stuff like that, do not work off the inverter, inverted circuit. So, when you're plugged in, all these will work. When you're running only on inverter, only that section right there called subpanel will work. Okay, so <clears throat> you have your main breaker here, which is the main coming from the transfer switch that feeds the whole panel. And then you have the main here that is just... Uh, from the inverter okay uh, air conditioners front floor heat rear air trailer uh, this particular coach is uh, it has the option for the 30 amp trailer uh, plug we'll show you that on the outside <clears throat> cooktop inverter uh, engine block heater washing machine dryer heat pads freezer so all those items uh any of these breakers if they're tripped they'll be down not quite all the way to the off position they're kind of they kind of hang in here about like that to reset them you have to push them all the way to the off position and then up to the on position okay underneath the vanity cabinet here we have uh, 120 volt outlets. These are GFI protected. Um, this is a this is a GFI. If it's tripped, you won't see the green light on the side. You can come in here. You have to be plugged in for this to reset, or you have to have uh, shore power supplied. You have to have should say you have to have electric power supplied to this, 120 volt electric power supplied to this um, for it to reset. So <clears throat> you can uh, click the reset, you should get the green button again, the green light again. The faucet here, uh, simple um, up and down to turn it on and off and then rotate it to uh, adjust your temperature. To plug the bowl you can push down on this uh, drain and push down on it again it will open it up underneath the vanity you have your paper towel holder or your toilet paper holder and that would be the shut off right there to your ice maker You would also have uh, your connections there to your faucet, and you have a couple of 
electrical boxes there for the um, kitchen and bedroom uh, floor heat. Beside that, you've got a couple of st storage door and drawer. <clears throat> and then your toilet. This is your Dometic toilet control. Uh, you can add water um, if, as long as you have pressurized water to the system. You can add water to the bowl or you can flush it. Um, there's a green... Uh, power indicator light here, and then there's a tank uh, level indicator here. As long as no light is on on the indicator, uh, you can push it, it will flush. If this tank indicator light uh, comes on, it indicates that your tank is full or near full, and uh, you're either going to be limited on flushing or it's not going to flush at all depending on whether it's yellow or red if this indicator is on it will disable the flush so you have another light switch here for ceiling vanity water pump backlighting and then your ceiling high and low for uh, your dimmer portion uh, this fantastic fan switch works identical to the one we just explained in the kitchen uh, it is right here in the ceiling overhead in the ceiling only difference on it is it does not have a wood cover other than that they work identically so we're going to take a look at the inner vac system this is a central vac system that is housed in the basement but the plumbing and stuff comes up here to the uh, bathroom. So you can simply open this port and sweep any debris with a broom into this port and it will suck it into the central vac um, just by lifting that door up. There's also a bag of <clears throat> accessories and a hose. So you have another port over here. And this port allows you to connect this hose into the port. And then this is a uh, remote operated on off switch for the to turn the unit on and off down in the basement. So just remember two things about it. One, if it doesn't work, there's a couple of screws here that can be taken off. And this can be opened up. There's a battery inside there. It's battery operated. Second thing is to remember about this is if you store this in a p place that this button gets hit, it does not have to be connected to turn the system on. That's the two most important things to remember about the system. But anyway, after that, you can hit the button uh, once, turn it on, hit it again, and turn it off. This can also be used directly in the basement from the um, central vac system. There's a port down there that it, the hose can be plugged into, and uh, so you can sweep your cargo bays also. All right, so the bathroom door here works the same as the front one there. Push down and uh, lock it in place. When you want to travel uh, again the same way with this bedroom door you're going to push push it down to be able to move it over here 
lock it in place for privacy when you're in the coach, but when you travel, you want it to be back here in this position. Okay, so we're going to look at the uh, KIB touchscreen. So anytime you touch it, you'll get the splash screen that comes up with a row of icons on the bottom. So if you go to home, you're going to see You're going to see your house and chassis voltages displayed, as well as the level in your fresh gray and black tank. From this screen, you can turn your water pump on or off. Uh, as you can see there, the, the button turned red when it was on. It's gray when it's off. Uh, if you're connected to city water uh, source outside with the hose, you can hit your top off or your autofill, um, and that will fill your tank and shut off uh, when it's full as long as it meets the parameters, uh, time parameters in between. Uh, tank heat, this is for uh, coaches that have tank heat in the basement. Um, you can turn that on and off. If you have it on, oops. If you have it on and there's, there has to be at least 5% water in the tanks, but you can see the icon underneath the gray and black tank. So if I turn that on and there was at least 5% in there, as long as there was at least 5% on there and it was cold enough, you would see these lights come on underneath the tanks. Uh, in addition, on the home screen to that, you have a few lighting controls over here. So all lights on and off um, and the bedroom lights on and off and bathroom lights on and off, master lights on and off and then your TV lift up and down. So you could control any of those from this as well. Go to your AGS screen. So on your AGS screen, first of all, uh, this would be your power button for your automatic generator start. And then uh, it will show you your status. Uh, we're plugged into shore power now, so that's lit up red. If we were in quiet time, that would be lit up red, and the generator would not run uh, automatically because of quiet time. And then if we were, the generator was actually running because AGS started it, uh, that generator running would show up there. And then it would also tell us what demanded it to turn on, whether it was the uh, rooftop HVAC units or the house or chassis battery voltages. Um, in here, in the setup, that's where you would set uh, quiet time if you wanted it. Uh, you can also see your house battery settings. So uh, this one is saying if it's 12 volts DC or 11 volt, 11.8 volt DC, that which is changeable, uh, it would start and for how many hours that the generator would run. Same with the chassis voltage. Uh, you can set the voltage up or down and it will start and run for the duration uh, set here. Use the arrow to get back out of it. Floor heat. Uh, this allows you to turn the floor heat on and then select high, medium, or low. If you don't want any floor heat on at all, 
can simply turn it off. Same with the back. For the HVAC, um, you have a choice of living room or bedroom. Then inside of here, you have the mode. You can select from furnace, fan only, mode off, mode cool, mode auto, or mode heat, heat pump. Right now it's cool outside. We're choosing furnace mode, which is the Oasis system in this coach. And so this gives us the inside temperature and the actual temperature that it's set at. Um, so if we were to turn this up a little bit uh, and wait for the delay, it would kick on and start heating. There it goes. And then you see the fire emblem here for for um, the heat. Uh, if we were doing the opposite and we were in cooling, you would have the snowflake icon come on there. Uh, so <clears throat> on this screen, you also have the Oasis controls. So this is how you turn your Oasis burner on or your heating element on AC heating element. So you have a choice. You can turn your burner on or off. You can turn AC element one on or AC element one and two on. For the most heat and the most hot water that you can get, you can turn both of them on. Uh, if the AC element can't keep up, the burner will come on. Um, but your burner needs to be on if your demand is high for sure. Uh, you may, if you're just trying to do AC elements, you may run out of uh, hot water when you're trying to take a shower. Okay. Um, then the fan mode, you can choose from auto, uh, forced low, forced medium, forced high. And then the next icon is Bluetooth pair. So you can go to this screen. You can press this button here to pair uh, your phone or other tablet to, to this system. Then you can control those, everything on this screen, you can control from that device if it's paired. Uh, that is, has to be within Bluetooth range of this for that to work though. So you could do it inside the coach or, or probably real close to the outside of the coach, but it has to be within Bluetooth range. Okay, and then your light uh, icon. So <clears throat> this portion of your light stays the same no matter which lighting control you choose. But then you have your bedroom controls. So your living room controls, it gives you uh, some options there in that area, your kitchen gives you options in that area. And then bath, it gives you options in your bathroom. And then the same in your bedroom, gives you options in your bedroom. But <clears throat> this portion will always stay the same no matter which uh, room you've chosen. So that's a quick rundown uh, of the KIB control. The only other thing that I will tell you, if you need to set up your time, uh, it's in the HVAC menu, and then you go to set time. That's important when you're, if you're trying to schedule, or if you're trying to set up quiet time, you have to have your clock right, or your quiet times won't be correct. All right, moving into the bedroom, uh, we have a carbon monoxide detector. 
And uh, to test that, just like the smoke detector, press and hold it there. You'll get your audible chirp. It'll go through a series of uh, chirps, and you know that your battery's good and it works. At any time that if that wouldn't work, you can squeeze it on the side here, open it up, and there's a 9-volt battery uh, that can be removed and changed. Latch it back in place. Should be good to go. Um, we'll go over here to this side and start here. Um, this is the thermistor for the bedroom zone. Um, and then these switches here are for the speakers. There's a speaker, two speakers in the ceiling there. They can be turned on and off if you uh, don't wish to listen to whatever kind of music is playing on the dash radio. Uh, underneath the bed here, uh, laying down looking up, we have the security lights. They're the same three security lights uh, that were in the overhead cabinet above the door. Uh, passenger side, driver side, and rear. Uh, you also have two different light controls here so that you can turn uh, ceiling and courtesy lights and stuff on and off. Uh, and then your uh, right and left hand reading lights. Uh, here for the bedroom as well. There are, in the overhead cabinet here, there are some removable uh, ports here. Uh, in case you were needing to use a CPAP machine, is really what they were intended for. Uh, the CPAP could be installed up here in one of these cabinets plugged in and then uh, the hoses ran through the uh, ports over here to the side. Uh, over Overhead here we have storage and like I said a 120 volt outlet there. That's the same all the way across. Uh, the side cabinets here <clears throat> beside the bed there's a little bit of additional storage there uh, with a 120 volt outlet with USB uh, chargers there on the side of those as well. Um, so if you don't want to plug in a chargey, uh, if you don't want to plug in a bulky charger to the outlet, you can just plug in your USB and charge your phone or device um, right there on your nightstand. Uh, the bed can be lifted up <clears throat> and to access storage underneath the bed. Uh, underneath the closet here is a set of drawers um, and those can be open and closed there. It's just additional storage there as well. This cabinet here will expose your washer and dryer. Um, fairly simple operation here as long as you have uh, your generator running or you're plugged in. Uh, you'll have, should have power back here um, as long as your breaker's uh, set there in the bathroom. And at that point, you can choose low temp or high temp here with this. Select your time and what setting you want there and press the start button to start the dryer. Uh, the washing machine. Uh, the most important part about the washing machine is... Uh, if you're going to use the washing machine, 
you want to outside in your water compartment you want to be uh, parked somewhere and hooked up to uh, so you can drain your gray tank uh, washing machines uh, go through quite a bit of water and we don't want you to overflow your um, gray tank so um, we want you to have your gray tank open and your hose connected to the um, sewage dump and uh, but you have a tray here that you can put your soap or your fabric softener in do your setting here uh, get your power button here and um, you can choose what setting you you want and what kind of uh, close your washing and whatnot. Press the start button to get it going. Right beside it, over here to the side, you have your your valves for your the water supply to your washing machine, and also the electrical plugs for voltage supply to your dryer and washing machine. Another storage cabinet below. And then a couple of cabinets above the closet as well. All right, uh, so then we have your wardrobe cabinet. Uh, right here we have a travel lock. Um, this lock pulls down uh, to keep these mirror doors from sliding around during travel. To open them, just push that lock up, and then you can open your slider doors. Um, once you're in the wardrobe here, there is a light switch there that can be turned on. Um, Got your closet rod to hang your clothes. Uh, back here, <clears throat> we have the KIB uh, lighting controls back here. So, um, really shouldn't need to be in this for anything, but um, I would say if you need to get in there, call for assistance. Uh, on this side over here, we have your safe and um, your booklet for this safe should be in your black bag. Uh, there's a default code to open the safe for the first time, I believe, and there's also a key in there. On this side of the closet here, uh, above the access here to the washing, washing machine uh, shutoff valves is um, <clears throat> an appliance data sheet. So uh, if you're needing service and uh, someone's asking you about the model and serial number of your appliances, uh, they're listed here um, and uh, what they are and the model and serial number if they apply. <clears throat> Once again, when you're done in this area, before you travel, you want to flip this travel latch into the locked position. Over here on the slide out, we have an AV cabinet here. Um, have a 120 volt outlet. You have uh, a uh, cable connection here that says roof mount. That's, I believe, for your satellite prep. And then this uh, HDMI cable here should go down to this TV.
The TV operates the same as the one we showed you in the front, and you'll have to go through the same setup sequence that we showed you in the front to get air or a cable TV back here. Just a couple of more storage cabinets there. Uh, 120 volt outlet. We have a window here that is an egress window. Um, you can use this window uh, to get fresh air by unclipping this and pushing that out like that. You can get fresh air in. It has a screen. In the event of an emergency, you would go ahead and pull this red handle out of the way here, and that would remove the screen. And then you could push this on, on out and escape out the um, window. So to close the window and lock it back in place for travel, you would simply pull it back in like that and latch the window back in place. Once again, manual shades, either way. And in the event that you really needed to get out this window, uh, this valance here is also installed on latches. You can grab it and pull it out of the way. <clears throat> Give yourself a little more clearance. Underneath there, you have uh, <clears throat> basically a bunch of dresser drawers for storage and then um, over here you have your uh, <clears throat> KIB switches for the bedroom so your lighting controls and your floor heating controls for the bedroom uh, I showed you on the KIB screen where you could turn the floor heat on and off there you can also turn it on and off here you can turn it on there and select your high, medium, or low. Um, the screen is basically a mirror image of, of, of this. So. Uh, up here we have a slide out control for the bedroom slide out. So to operate the bedroom slide out, you'd push and hold this uh, to the out position to run it out, and the in position to run it in. Once again, uh, you need to hold it the whole time that you're moving it. As soon as you release it, it stops. All right, well, we'll start here and walk around on the outside of the 24 Superstar. I'm gonna start here by opening the hood latch on this side. can raise the hood You're lifting up there's a couple of gas struts that help you assist with that and then keep it from falling all the way over uh, <clears throat> so windshield washer fluid container your air dryer uh, filter and uh, your antifreeze coolant level for the uh, engine and then inside here will be your air cleaner We'll walk around the other side real quick. Your uh, fuel water separator uh, and the drain for it. Uh, if you happen to get some fuel that has water in it, uh, it'll usually settle here at the bottom. You can drain it off using that drain. Here's your power steering fluid reservoir, and you can see right here on the side is your minimum and max fill levels. Uh, engine dipstick is there, and the engine oil fill would be right on the top of the engine there. Um, there's a fuse relay box here uh, in the event that you need to check fuses or anything. Uh, these are all chassis related, so they would be on the Freightliner side. You can open this up. There's a legend in here 
and uh, you can refer uh, to that and your owner's manual as to what the fuse size and purpose is that's clipped in there so uh, once uh, once you're done here in the um, front engine area you can grab this lower it down and then these can be relatched there like that on each side So this camera here is part of the 360 degree camera that we explained on your uh, Excite radio. And this portion right here is part of the Detroit collision avoidance system that's included in your chassis. And uh, so you wouldn't want to cover this. You'd want to keep it clean and clear, free of uh, ice and any other uh, objects. One thing that should be done pre-trip is you should do a light inspection. And right here on the driver's side, there's a button here, a switch here that says light test. So you can, you can uh, press that button <clears throat> and the lights will go through a test sequence. So you can see if your lights are working, your clearance lights are working, your turn signals are working. And um, so I suggest that you do that each time that you uh, go to travel. Um, you can do the same with the lights in the rear. It, it does uh, them all. We talked about the electric mirrors, which would be these, this uh, on the top that are adjustable through the switch on the inside. This mirror and this one here, you can move here to see the side of your coach from the driver's seat. Those would be manually adjusted. Um, we talked about the uh, flagpole. So this is your flagpole bracket here and this is the insert That's how that works um slide out and slide out topper there the slide out topper comes out automatically as the slide out is extended it also retracts automatically as the slide out is retracted the important thing is once you've been once you've had your slide outs out and uh, you go to uh, get ready to travel, you want to visually inspect and make sure that there's no uh, tree limbs, pine cones, pine needles, uh, ice uh, or snow on top of that uh, slide out topper that would impede the uh, slide out from fully retracting and or the slide out topper from rolling up correctly. So you want to check that on each slide out before you would uh, retract it. As we talked about when we were looking in the cabinet above the uh, entrance door, the Gerard remote that was up there, this is basically a mirror of that same switch in a remote so uh, once again you can select channels zero one or two and one would be the front awning uh, you could run it uh, out uh, one thing to keep in mind these are these awnings are 120 volt uh, operated so you have to have uh, the coach plugged in, the generator running, or the inverter turned on for them to operate. So <clears throat> I've hit stop. 
you can hit stop at any time to uh, keep the awning from going out. I'm gonna operate the awnings out. I'm gonna go to channel zero. So they both come out at the same time. I'm gonna hit out. You see they both started their travel. It's a little bit windy today. We'll see what happens here. Uh, if it's too windy, uh, they will automatically retract. Okay, they've reached their full extension and there are lights that are uh, LED light strips that can be turned on. So we've got it on channel zero and the lights are both on. You can hit the light button again and they'll both go off. So off and on. Uh, you can get these out of sequence if you have turned it on on a different channel and then you uh, go to like channel zero, uh, you can get them out of sequence. It's a little windy out here today and uh, you can see that the awnings are starting to bounce a little bit when they... When they bounce enough that that sensor uh, activates, then they'll they'll uh, store. It is uh, <clears throat> important that you don't have them out when it's windy or when it's uh, heavy rain. Right at the top of the dried awnings in the middle, uh, from about this angle here, you can see there's a couple of uh, plugs on the top. That's where those manual retraction ports are for the rod I showed you earlier. Uh, <clears throat> So enough about the awning, we'll go on to uh, the other components here. We'll come back and catch the uh, entrance door locks here in a minute, but you got a porch light uh, up above there. You have the <clears throat> passenger side uh, camera for the 360 camera system. You've got a security light there and a, a security light on the rear slide out. Uh, <clears throat> you have a grab a handle here and it has a touch pad here. Um, so from this touch pad uh, there are several ways to operate and lock the compartments or the door. We showed you the ones in the overhead cabinet. There's also a remote uh, that I showed you in the, earlier that's in the cabinet, key fob remote. Then you can also press and hold one on this. That also locks the entrance door and the compartment doors. You can also unlock from this position the factory preset code is one, two, three, four, four. And then you press one to unlock the entry door or you do the same code and press two to unlock the entry door and the compartment doors at the same time. Uh, that code uh, 
should be changed by the end user so that anyone can't access their coach. Um, we do that for, mainly for the salesmen so that they can get in and uh, show the coaches and uh, the workers at the factory so that there's not a, co a different code for every coach. Um, you'll want a unique code once you take possession of it. So um, in the back here, there's a compartment that has a Trimark module in it. Uh, located close to that Trimark module is a push button switch. It's a little small round black switch that can be pressed to put this into programming mode. There's uh, instructions in your owner's manual on um, doing that. So on your key ring, there's a <clears throat> Trimark 2002 key that you can insert here. It'll get you into the uh, fuel tank on the passenger side. So located down here also is your Oasis Hydronic Heating Overflow. Uh, there should always be fluid in it. Uh, there's some markings on there for when it's cold or hot. And then right beside it is also your diesel fuel filter for the Oasis Hydronic Heating System. Um, right beside here, there's a, what I, what we call a duck bill. Uh, it's, there's a roof drain up there that comes down and dumps out right, right over here to the side. So <clears throat> if it's been raining or anything, uh, snow melt, anything like that, and you see water dripping out down here underneath your coach, don't freak out. It's probably, uh just draining off the roof. So anyways, we can close this back up when we're finished in that area, lock it back in place. This would be your uh, right turn signal camera uh, that comes on when you turn your turn signal on or when you make the selection on the Excite screen on your camera screen for uh, the right position. Your first compartment here, um, you have a light strip here that's operated by a magnetic switch here. So you open and close the door, it will automatically uh, come on and off. Right here for this, uh, this coach is optioned with the uh, hot water to the front of the coach. Uh, exterior uh, spigot. So it's located here and then there's a shutoff valve right here for that. So if you're in uh, cold weather uh, this compartment is heated but this right out here is not so uh, if you're in cold conditions you'd want to turn that off and open this valve up drain the water out. Uh, in this box right beside here is your auxiliary air um, for like the passenger seats. And um, so it, you, you can turn it off or on here by this switch. <clears throat> Moving back to the next compartment. Uh, it's just purely a storage cabinet. Once again, it has the LED light in there. Operates the same way. Uh, HWH steps we mentioned earlier. Um, that you can turn the switch off up there. Uh, to leave the steps in the extended position when you're camping. Um, you can 
turn that switch back on and then they will operate each time that you open and close the door. Uh, I'm going to do that real quick here because I'm going to demonstrate. Okay, I've turned the steps back on and as I close this door, they're going to go in. And then when I open them, they're going to come out. Um, right here is a shin guard. And uh, that will, if it hits anything or anybody's leg, it will shut off before it's fully extended to get it to reset. Just close the door, let it recycle. Then there's also another set of switches that are in this mechanism. If you would happen to come down and hit a curb, it will jerk that step and shut the system down. So if you've ever if you ever have the step and doesn't completely come out, one of those two things could have happened. Uh, try closing the door and uh, reopening it and let it come out to its full extension. Once again, in the event that it would not come out, uh, you can use this switch right here beside the door to override the sensors and make it go out. While we're here, we'll talk about the entrance door. So we talked about all the different ways to lock it so far. There's also, you can manually lock it with this switch here that locks the handle portion of it. And then there's also a deadbolt uh, lock here that can be manually operated. You want to make sure that's fully retracted before you shut the door. If it's not, the deadbolt will strike the, the uh, door frame and cause damage. Uh, there's a lever here that can be released so that you can operate your screen door separately from your entrance door. You can leave your entrance door open and just have your screen door open and close. Um, once that does come back in contact with this, it should push that, hold it down, uh, keep it next to the door, but allow it not to catch on the, on the catch here. So you got your slider here to cover that stuff up if you're using your screen. Um, that way you don't get bugs in. All right, we'll move on back to the next compartment here. Next compartment here, we have an exterior freezer optioned on this coach. So there's a little slide out tray here, manually operated that you can extend this out. You can open up your freezer here. Now this can be powered on. There's two different. There's two different plugs here. There's a 110 and a 12 volt. And <clears throat> the way Newmar wires this, you can have both of them plugged in. If you don't have 110, it will turn on the 12 volt. If you do have 110, it will turn off the 12 volt. You can come here to your power button. You can see that there's AC power going to it and you can set your temperatures. There's a menu here that you can go through and set it up how you want. You can set this to be a freezer or a refrigerator depending on what uh, temperature setting you put it at. Okay, and then 
there is also a USB uh, port there strictly for charging um, a USB device. So we push this back in. Uh, when you do that, you want to make sure that your plugs are up out of the way. <clears throat> and then we have the Intervac accessories that you can use uh, inside or outside of the coach. Uh, we'll show you down here in another compartment where you can plug that in. Um, up here at this side, you've got the light and you've got the control board for the KIB uh, monitoring system. <clears throat> you have a uh, tool here for lug nuts. Moving back to this compartment, this would be your <clears throat> outside entertainment center. And you can see that this door opens from the bottom. This door has a two stage strut on it. So you can open it basically to this height here, or you can push it just a little bit more until it goes over another set of uh, seals in there, and then it will hold it open at a higher level. Uh, this TV is mounted on a swivel. It can be pulled out and rotated to your desired position. There's a 120 volt outlet and USB chargers uh, plug right there. When you're done watching TV, you can push this back and then there's magnetic clips that hold it in place. Uh, the Bose speaker can be listened to out here through the TV. There's a selector switch here. You can choose either TV or off, or you can choose um, dash radio. Now, if you choose dash radio, you want to listen to the music out here from the dash radio on the radio itself. There's what they call house mode. You'll have to put it into house mode to get it to output uh, to this speaker out here. Okay, uh, then we have the fresh tank drain. So <clears throat> your fresh tank sets back in behind here. There's a valve right here. Open it, uh, open it to drain it. That's on right now, and that's closed if you're going to fill it. <clears throat> this would be one of your docking lights. Once again, security light up there. Um, and then moving back to the next compartment back. This would be this would be your compartment with uh, several controls and stuff in it. Uh, right here is your Gerard controls for your two main awnings. If for some reason you couldn't get the remotes to work either in the overhead cabinet or uh, the handheld remote. Uh, there's a couple of indicators here. Um, one, come back and see if they're powered up. Uh, they're plugged into a 120 volt outlet here. So you can make sure that uh, that outlet is powered up. And um, if it is, there's also three buttons here on the bottom, in, out, and stop. Those can be manually operated right off of this uh, control box. Back behind that is the uh, 
the slide out controls and this one here says passenger side front and this one here says bedroom slide out so those are your two um, slide out controls uh, located right here is your central vac system your inner vac uh, so I told you you could connect on onto it out here and use it out here so there's where the port is at that you can open up to connect your hose their power switch is right here on and off you can also if you're using your hose you can also plug it in there and use their uh hose the remote on the hose itself and that's plugged in here as well so um if it's not working you know obviously make sure it's plugged in and everything okay supplied with your coach is a air hose with a chuck on it for filling up tires um, and this compartment has a slide tray that is manually operated you can uh, bring it in and out it also has uh, four floor tiles supplied with um, the coach that came out of the same die lot of via the tiles in your coach in case you would have any issues with those there's some matching replacements next compartment back <clears throat> we have some hitch accessories uh, that came with the coach here we have um, you have a light switch here and you have the release lever that you can pull right here to open the rear hatch those lights that light switch there turns on these lights here on the rear in this compartment you have some storage here um, and then you have some pretty long storage here uh, usually works out great for folding tables and stuff like that have a manually operated uh, light here Just turn that on and off there and then when you're finished you can grab these this uh, rear hatch door and close it you want to push real good on each side to make sure it's latched all the way in the second latch. <clears throat> Here on the rear cap, you've got your other 360 camera right there for the rear, a rear security light, and then your main rear camera is up there at the top. That's the one that you're able to select hitch view or a horizon view or a normal view off of uh, as I showed you earlier in the uh, Excite radio <clears throat> you've got your <clears throat> hitch set up here your uh, toe, toe plug here if you want this style or there's the seven pin bargeman style or the four way flat style so set up for a number of different uh, wiring types uh, dangling underneath there in the wind you can see the Newmar mud rock guard okay uh, up here above my head is the dryer vent so this is where that any of the uh, heat is and lint is expelled from the dryer that would come out of the coach in this compartment here right here is your 30 amp trailer plug uh, this coach was optioned with that so you can pull your line around when you're not being towed when you're parked 
from your <coughs> from your coach from your trailer put it up through this pocket right here and plug it in and <coughs> you'll still be able to close your door with it plugged in uh, this is one of the slide out motors right here for the main slide out <coughs> next compartment back here we have another uh, piece of the the hitch and um, some more storage area <clears throat> another docking light here by the driver's side tire this compartment here is a storage area for like a sewer hose this uh <clears throat> this compartment is not 100 percent sealed so <clears throat> if you put something in here um that has water in it it could drain out but also along with that you put something in there uh it may get dirty as well from road spray you got your engine exhaust tip and your generator exhaust coming out there open this door <clears throat> we've got our water bay so in this bay and get a couple of these things out of the way so we can see so this is our water hose so we'd want to remove this cap here and hook this up to our our potable water source and when we, when we were camping with it, we'd want to put it through this channel here, and then it would allow us to close the door without pinching the hose. <clears throat> when we're done with that hose, we can unhook it and put our cap back on. And... Then there's a switch right here beside it that retracts it. Okay, so we get that out of the way. I showed you earlier in the kitchen area, there was a drain plug, a rubber drain plug. That rubber drain plug is for this porthole right there. Uh, this right here would be your winterizing hose and these would be your A and B valves right here so to winterize it there's instructions right here printed right on on this panel you would basically want to get all your water out of your system use your low point drains here uh, open them up your hot and cold low point drains <coughs> Get as much water out of the system as you can. Close them back up. You'd want to take this off. You'd want to put this in your bottle of potable antifreeze. Open this valve here up. Close this one. Turn on your water pump. That would pull antifreeze in through this hose and it would go through the water lines and you could run it out at each faucet and each appliance that takes water, such as a washing machine or um, your toilet, any, any faucet. You want to run it through all of them. You want to run enough through there that it not only comes out pink in there but you have enough pink to flush out the water in the p-trap below which whatever appliance that is okay 
So when you were done winterizing, you'd come back here and you would turn your water pump off and you would reverse these valves. Uh, you would turn this one off, open this one here, and then um, it would be ready to start using again. So uh, this is your whole house water filter housing. There's a red button here on the top of it, and you can push this here to release pressure on it. I showed you the white wrench in the cabinet in the kitchen earlier, and that can be used to help you loosen this here up. So once this is loosened up and taken off, you can take your filter out of your plastic. You can set it in here there's a little tab down there on the bottom that will line up with one of these holes and then you can put this assembly back in there and tighten it back up okay um when you want to fill your water tank of course, you know, you'd still have this connected to your potable water source. And you could either switch this to this position, and that's a manual fill position. And you basically wait until it's full. You can check it on your monitor panel, or it will overflow out the bottom. And then you would put turn it this direction. So... That's how to manually fill it. The other option is that you have this hooked up to your potable water source. You leave it in autofill mode, and then you activate your autofill off of your KIB touch panel. Um, either way works pretty well. When you're going to dump your tanks, this is your sewage wrench valve. So you would hook potable water source up to here. When you're done emptying your black tank to help flush out any solids, it would be. Um, so to go ahead and dump your tanks, you would attach your four inch hose here to this you would attach your four inch hose here and run it to your sewer drain and then once that was done you could operate your gate valves they're electrically operated here and these are reset switches in case that they would draw too much amperage, they would pop and you could reset them here. But you could open the valve, drain all your black tank first, hook your hose up here, rinse your black tank while everything's open. Then you would turn off your water hose to your sewage rinse. You would close your valve and then you would proceed to your gray tank. Then you would open your gray tank valve and let that flush out the solids and the waste from your black tank in your hose. Once it was done draining, you would close that valve. You would detach your hose from here and reinstall this cap. Put it on there and you twist it until it locks in place and then you would want to rinse your sewer hose with most dump stations have a non potable water hose set in there that you can use to rinse your sewage hose out and then you would want to take it and store it 
inside there. Your outside shower faucet can then be used for you to wash up your hands or anything that you might have uh, gotten spilled in here in this area. One other thing that I need to mention while we're here is right here, this white tank right here, is the Sanovite lift pump. And so this coach, I believe the kitchen sink drains into that one. And then that lift pump in turn pumps it up into the gray tank. There's also in this compartment back here towards the back of this wall, there is a Oasis heater to keep this area from freezing. And there's a sensor right here that will automatically make it kick on when it's about 38 degrees or so. However, for it to operate, the customer has to have the Oasis system turned on and it has to be warm. Otherwise you won't get any heat. All right, moving on to the next compartment. We have the Onan generator. And right here, there's a control pad and an hour meter. So you can see how many hours is on your generator. You can start and stop the generator from this location as well as uh, the one I showed you earlier on the dash. Um, then right here is your uh, antifreeze and your oil fills right here. And uh, this is a brick breaker for your generator right here so if this is off or tripped even if your generator is running it will not supply power inside the coach so first thing to check if your generator is running and you don't have power inside your coach come out here and check this breaker if it's off or tripped push it off all the way and then forward to the on position moving on to the next compartment forward from there we have your battery tray your battery compartment um, so this particular coach has lead acid batteries in it so you can pull those pins and you can slide this forward to get easier access to the batteries. So once you slide out your batteries, uh, these caps are removable. You can check the uh, fluid level in each cell, um, three, three cells per battery. Um, this is a, a bank of six volt batteries that are connected in series parallel. If you would forget how they're connected, there is a diagram right here on the side that shows how they're supposed to be connected. And the main thing about these uh, batteries is you need to keep the fluid level up on them above the plates and you need to keep the terminals clean. Once you're done servicing them, you can push them back in. You can place the pin back in each side to lock the tray. Um, in the unlikely event that you would um, not have battery power inside your coach, there are a couple of uh, high amperage fuses right here. 
underneath these rubber covers that can be replaced uh, if needed. They can be checked there for sure. And then up in here, this area, you've got the wiring that goes up into your slide outs and the traceways for those to go in and out. In addition to that, you have right up here, you have your KMG uh, slide out controller for this full wall slide out. Moving forward to the next compartment, you have your HWH um, hydraulic pump and reservoir assembly right here. Uh, once again, there have pins there that can be pulled out so that you can pull this out and access the stuff a little bit easier. Uh, the Dextron Mercron uh, transmission fluid is used for the uh, hydraulic side. And right here is the fill cap and the cap also has on it the level indicator. So, right there. The one thing that's a little bit different about the HWH system is you want, when you check the fluid level, you need to do it with the cylinders in the retracted position. If you fill it with the cylinders in their extended position, when they retract, your tank will overflow. So the cylinders in the retracted position is the HWH jacks are actually retracted to their fully stowed position. And if it has an HWH slide out or an HWH step you would want the slide out extended and the jack and the steps retracted once you're done servicing checking things you can push this back in and reinstall the pins Forward to that, we have the Oasis Hydronic Heating System. On this panel itself, there's a power on and off switch. For any of your, for your KIB panel to turn, be able to turn this on or anything else heating wise work, the power has to be turned on on this. So right over here, it's hard to see today because uh, the sun's shining right on it but there's a green LED here for power and there would also be one for uh, AC heat. Uh, so if there was a fault, those are down here like low water, low voltage, flame out, igniter, combustion fan, those kind of things right there, okay? So you would correct that like if it had low water you would put, you would fill it up with uh, the uh, antifreeze that it takes, the Century antifreeze, which is available through Newmar. That's what's in that overflow bottle up there. Uh, and then you would hit your reset. Um, in the event that your KIB system would not operate the um, Oasis. Right here, clipped up here, there is a control panel, a manual control panel. Bypasses the electronics uh, in 
all the other systems that can be plugged in and it can be operated from here. The diesel burner electric element turned on from here. That's for emergency cases. Uh, right up here on the wall, there's a silver box with a bunch of LED indicators. Uh, it shows the different zones and basically what's going on with them. Um, and if there's a fault, um, there's several fuses uh, inside that that can be changed if need be. And anytime that you wonder if your burner is actually burning, you, you can turn the system on and wait for it, combustion fan and stuff to come on. But you can look through this window and you should be able to see the flame in there through that window. All right, for the last compartment here on the driver's side, open it up here and we have the electrical compartment. Um, so this, this reel here, this is your 50 amp power cord. You can pull it out manually when you get ready to retract it. There's a power switch right here on the side, power retract. If you're hooking up to the coach and you want to be able to shut your door, you put your cord there in that little cutout and you can still close your door without pinching your line. Uh, got the inverter right here and there on this inverter right down here on the bottom there's a reset uh, here in case it's not working uh, there is a reset switch there and uh, this this panel here will show you basically um, what the one inside in the overhead cabinet will show you. It'll show you in much more detail what's going on. Uh, this one here just will blink at you and kind of tell you it's on or off. So right here we have the transfer switch. So what this does is it allows the power to come in from either the shore power or the generator. And then it comes into here and uh, this has a couple of relays in it that transfer the power then over to the fuse box in the bathroom. Um, there's a monitor here for that system right here. Yeah, if you were to look at this, it would show you what the voltage is on leg one and leg two if you're plugged into 50 amp service. Um, if you're only plugged into 30 amp service, it's only to show you voltage on, on leg one. Uh, but you can um, also see if there's any faults in this system. It'll, it'll display there. This uh, hatch right here is the park cable connection. So if you were at a campsite that had cable available, you would take a cord and run from here over to their box uh, with uh, their cable connection. Behind the power cord reel here is a plastic panel that is held on with Velcro. It's removable. And on the back side of it, it will show you um, what the fuses and breakers are that are in this area. It will tell you what they do and what size they are. So uh, in addition to the, those that are all labeled there, you've got your BIM here, your battery isolation manager. And so uh, this is the part that will kick in uh, when you're plugged in and allow 
the inverter to charge the house and chassis batteries both under certain conditions. There's a whole list of conditions that have to be met for that to work. Uh, they're outlined, uh, I believe, in the owner's manual. This relay here would be your uh, battery disconnect. Um, we talked about the battery disconnect in the overhead uh, cabinet there above the entry door. That's the relay that would be turning on and off. Once again, most of these fuses in here are uh, replaceable. They burn out and you replace them. There are a few in here that have the resettable um, portion to them and those could be reset. In addition to that, the control down there for your uh, 360 camera is housed here as well. So once you're done in this area, you can put this cover back in here and uh, Velcro it back in place. Here you have your left hand turn signal camera. Right here in this compartment, you can open that up. You have access to fill your fuel tank and your DF tank. Also in this compartment, right here towards the top, you have an auxiliary air outlet. That's where you would plug that hose into that was in the other side in the compartment that I said was supplied with your coach. And then this one here says auxiliary air inlet, brake release. So this is where if you were being towed, a tow truck could plug in here and supply air to it to release the brakes on the coach. Uh, for that air outlet to work, of course, you have to have air pressure in your tanks. Uh, your tank is fairly small, so starting your engine runs the compressor, which supplies air pressure to the tank. So, um, guess what I'm saying is, if you don't have your engine running, you're going to run out of air pretty quick. Um, Along, along here, the only thing that I don't think we talked about as we went along here is right here, there's a power on and off switch. It's red. That is to turn the chassis battery's power on or off. So if you turn this off, you will not be able to start the coach and it will basically be in a storage mode. Okay, we talked earlier about slide out operation and we talked about uh, that we would show you that a little bit later. So before you run your slide outs out, you should be on your air suspension. So your coach should be aired up and your jacks should be retracted. Once you come out here and you kind of look at these gaps around the slide out and make sure that they're fairly even and they're and that they're not uh, touched or pinching anywhere. And as you can see, there's there's a gap everywhere. So we're good to go ahead and run that slide out out. So we would go on to the inside, we would run the slide out out. And then once we had the slide out fully extended, uh, all of them, we would go ahead and uh, put the jacks down for making a stable uh, environment for your camping trip. 